In this experiment, we're going to make thermite powder, ignite the thermite powder, and then cool it with liquid nitrogen after it's fully reacted to see the magnetic properties of the resulting ion. Here we have 20 grams of Fe2O3, 6 grams of aluminum finely ground powder, it's 30 microns. I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to light it with a strip of magnesium ribbon and just when it's finished burning and you've got a, a pool of hot molten iron I'm going to quench that with liquid nitrogen and then we're going to see just how magnetic the, the iron product is. Then we're going to compare that with a second product where the iron has been allowed to cool more slowly. So let's begin. You can see there it's still hot under the mold, mold liquid nitrogen, so there's a significant laden frost effect around it, so it's probably not cooling as fast as what you think. So we have our products from the different thermite reactions that were run. This one was quenched with liquid nitrogen. This one was run on a larger scale, so you've got more product, and was quenched with cold water. And this one was allowed to cool down in air, slowly. Here's the one that was quenched with the liquid nitrogen. So that's basically just like iron. Now, let's check the one that was cooled down with cold water. Same thing again, this was run on a slightly bigger scale. Check that one. Completely non-magnetic. So it looks like water is much better at cooling down the uh, mixture, the reaction, than liquid nitrogen is. Now finally, this one is allowed to cool in air slowly and of course that's very magnetic as you'd expect. The differences are that the slowly quenched products have crystalline iron in them and, and are therefore magnetic. The one that was quenched with water has amorphous iron in it so there's amorphous iron mixed with aluminum oxide and this is totally non-magnetic. Thanks for watching and if you've got any comments please uh, feel free to leave them.